Don't mind me, I'm just looking at shirts. <laughs> Negative three. Negative three. Negative three. Do you see any of the aggro crag? Was any of that left over? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. No? I'm taking some of that home. <laughs> God, I hope that storyline ends soon. Uh, and six to eight weeks later, they mail you a freaking magnet. <laughs> yep. I'm Mondo. Yeah. Mongo. Mondo. Mondo. <laughs> Mondo Burger. Welcome to Good Burger. Welcome to Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> just just defer to the cheap pop. Nick Foley still owes Tim ten dollars. Just the definition of blue balls and Gaga. Like that should be a t-shirt. Blue balls and gaga. And it's still real to me, damn it. The I was waiting for her to say his name. I'm like, I totally forgot to say it. <laughs> you, give, you give this fucking guy one week off, and, now you see, and you add you add two words to the intro. And Tim's like, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. <laughs> We've been doing the intro for 200 fucking episodes the same way. <laughs> the most asinine shit that I've ever seen. Like, it just, like, and, that. that was a storyline. A man ate his dog. <laughs> reason to come here and listen to ourselves talk. Absolutely. And, and we then hope. you can listen to us, too. <laughs> <laughs> Strap on and balls, only on yeah. wrestling, wrestling, past and present. <laughs> This is Gang Grell, the Vampire War, and you're listening to Wrestling, where wrestling's past and present. <sighs> what do you guys want to talk about? Wrestling with wrestling's past and present. I will oh, not it. the trailer again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> yeah, has anything happened in the news uh, wrestling-wise lately? It's been a pretty slow Friday. It's like that every Friday. Oh, wait, no. Every Friday's been fucking chaos. <laughs> well, rolled up. You're not ready. Rampage was on today, so that was good. What, anything else happened? Uh, anybody, anybody? Oh, uh, Ric Flair said Jeff Jarrett was too old to wrestle. Ah. Uh, I shit hey. you not. Ric Flair called someone too old to wrestle. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, Jeff Jarrett also called his son-in-law very mid. So, said Andrade. Right. He said oh. Andrade's a curtain jerker. That's right, Tim. Someone named someone named Vince retired. Someone named Vince. Vince Russo. Vince Russo. No, we're not that lucky. No. Vince Vaughn is he not making movies anymore? I hope Vinny. so. <laughs> I mean, Vinny Vegas is like one of his. Vinny Vegas. There you Vinny, go. Yeah. Vinny, isn't Vinny Vegas already retired? Vince Carter, does he still play basketball? I don't. I, don't, I think he's still bitching about practice. That was Allen Iverson. Uh, wrong, was yeah, wrong, wrong NBA player. Yeah. Oh. I oh, remember it was an NBA player. That's that's about as far as my NBA knowledge goes. <laughs> Same here. Oh, I, I don't watch that shit. So, uh, well, anyways, this is wrestling with wrestling's past and present. I'm Tim Kurt. I'm rolling fuelless. And I'm Mongo. <laughs> and rolling, We're having rolling a slight free. internet uh, difficulties on this bear with us today. Hey, you um, can't blame it on me. I got I got full everything down here on my computer right now, so I fixed my issue. I don't know whose issue it is now, but it ain't mine. You know, we're just going to blame it on Vince, all right? Yeah. You know, he, he's I, gone I now. pay a pretty penny for my quality internet from Breezeline. <laughs> add them to the list of shows who probably not, or not the list of sponsors excuse by me by the no. time we get big enough for sponsors they'll have changed their name already so it will not matter <laughs> it's the company that used to be Metrocast it used to be Atlantic Broadband that's now Breeze Line for the people and before Tim was born they weren't they like Cabletron or Cablevision yeah Cablevision and they went yeah, to Metrocast cool. and then yeah yep. see that's what I'm saying so you know by the time we're even big enough for sponsors they won't be around anyway so it's like that random. It's like that random uh, restaurant near everyone. Everyone's town has this restaurant where they just change like names, but it's the same decorations. It's the same everything. You're like, wait, wasn't this like Steve's House of Pancakes like two weeks ago? Why is it a Chinese food place? Like, I'm so confused because there's eggs on the wall. Like, there's bacon dancing in this painting. <laughs> Speaking of pancakes, you guys ever go to that restaurant in like Laconia up that way? That was the griddle in the middle, where you like like griddle your own like pancakes and shit. I have that, not. That, no, that well, what, what kind of shit anymore. is that? They had they had a table, and you'd have like four seats, and like literally the gr- the griddle was in the table, and you'd like order whatever mix you wanted, and you make your own like. Fucking smartest idea ever. They're like, here we don't have to make any pancakes ever. You make your own. 
I don't want to pay to make me no damn pancakes I'm going out to eat. It's like the self checkouts in Walmart. At least this week. I don't want to pay to do your job. (laughs) Yeah, but that's not where the new day got their pancakes, is it? Probably not. I mean, they're out of business now, so I mean, it's like not... I know my friend Jonathan's going to say this is blasphemous, but it's like that Papa Murphy's chain that they have down here in North Carolina, and I think it's up in the Midwest too. So sorry for you, Papa Murphy's fans, but it's a take and bake where you basically you order a pizza and then you take it home and cook it yourself. Like, no, if I'm paying a premium, I want you to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> or like, same thing, like road thing. Like, I don't want to make my own pancakes. I'm out to eat. I'm I'm paying for the convenience of being lazy, not not wanting to cook or do dishes or do anything but stuff my face and feel bad about it when I get the bill. Like a normal. I don't know, dude. I was pretty happy with that place. I thought it was pretty cool. Oh, I'm sure it's a it's a I'm sure it's fantastic. I'm not well, like it's not open anymore. anymore. So, I don't really know. Yeah, maybe maybe it wasn't that fantastic. <laughs> Um. Anyways, <laughs> so so what what are we covering this week? Um. Well, we were supposed to cover fully loaded ninety eight. Um. Wait, so fully Mongo. loaded Friday. <laughs> huh? Bongo, Bongo, don't you have a clip? Do you have a clip that you can play that like? He's a millionaire who should be a billionaire. You know why he's not a billionaire? It's because he surrounds himself with glad handing, nonsensical. Yes, man, like John Laurinaitis, who's going to tell him everything that he wants to hear. And I'd like to think that maybe this company will be better after Vince McMahon's dead. But the fact is, it's it's going to get taken over by his idiotic daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. So I wonder who he's talking about there. <laughs> so, and, and for those who don't know, the, the word they bleeped out there was douchebag. <laughs> he was calling John Lauren I just a douchebag back then. Pretty fair. Before before the, the stuff came out when before he became Papa Bella and all all the stuff came out about how he may or may not have done some shady shit with Vince and or known about Vince's shady shit. I, I don't know. Weird weird situation. So do you think now that Vince is retired that Conrad's gonna you know just it's just gonna be this next week? Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson and this is no chance to tell with Vincent Kennedy McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no chance. <laughs> well, you see, Conrad, I don't remember because, well, I was doing other things. No, Vince, I, I wasn't asking you about last week. I was, oh, 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 uh, oh, the show. Yeah, I tore that script up. I don't remember it. Like, it, <laughs> I, I just can't wait for that because you know Conrad gets all the retired people, and then when he does. And then you we said just, retired, right? Yes, retired. Okay, just checking because there Excuse are some me, who are a little questionable. <laughs> <laughs> With my stutter, I apologize. Sometimes my words kind of blend together. So, yes, for he gets all the retired people and all the, their podcasts, except that he gets credit with that host that you absolutely love, Roland. Um, you know, no, no offense to that guy. I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head, but. Uh... Yeah, nobody nobody wants to listen to you. Like we want to listen to Conrad. Conrad had that's the best part about when Conrad only had like three or four podcasts. He had like a good rapport with these guys, and now he has fucking no time to do any of them. So like <laughs> they're like, we're gonna have this guy host today. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but he's not bad Paul at Bromwell. it. Thank you, thank you, Paul Bromwell. Yeah. Good call, good call. Yeah, nice dude. But like you said, we yeah. said before. Uh... It's like uh, they so even just, had a, didn't Bischoff host a Grilling Jr. not too long ago. Did he? I think so. I don't know. I, I don't keep up with Jr.'s podcast anymore. I used to, but then I got tired of listening to him on Dynamite, mispronounce shit. Then I got tired of listening to him on Rampage here and there in the pay per views and talk about the big girls on the floor. I just, <laughs> well, I, I honestly just got tired of listening to Jr. Ramble. So, <laughs> and he also has the hots for Natalia's sister, apparently. Oh, nice. Well, did you see that? No, I did not. So. Natalia tweeted out like a photo of her and her sister, and like you know, they were in like bathing suits. They have an OnlyFans together. It's really weird. Yeah, it, yeah, it, I, it I did pretty, hear about that. That is kind of weird, but it's kind of a revealing photo, but nothing like too like awful. And she goes, "Very pretty. If only she was a little bit older." Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like Jim Nyhart. Jim Nyhart is like rolling in his grave right now. Like, That's I my know. daughter. Damn it. <laughs> You old uh, bastard, you creepy, you creepy old bastard. I instead will give of, Tony instead of the CLB. 
I was gonna say I will give Tony Khan some credit though for uh, realizing that we can't do a full two hours of JR and Dynamite, and they're like, "All right, so JR, you can come out at like nine fifteen. Don't worry, we'll give you an entrance to so see if you feel special." And Tony's like, oh, "Thank God we don't do two hours of this." <laughs> so there was he he commented on that a while back. Tony Khan did, and according to JR, Tony Khan sees the value in having JR make an entrance and like the lead up to having JR come out and supposedly it makes people happy and all this stuff. And it's like maybe once in a while, but like every week, like uh, I don't like what if you're Tony Schiavone or Excalibur or Taz or big show. Oh, sorry. Paul white or Mark Henry or whoever, like that, that does say no. Yeah. That too. Um, that was a character from a movie, Tim. I don't know. And he's actually going to yeah, be... I've actually sure. seen that movie. Oh, and okay. he's going to be playing that character in AEW. They got the rights to it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but anyway, so, like, why don't they get interested, too? Like, if, if we're given JR, who, who, honest to God, I love JR. He, he was part of my youth. He is so far past his prime that, like, he's like a meteorologist. He gets shit wrong 50% of the time, and he's making six figures. And now Look they're like... Cesaro yeah, swinging. Well, well, now, and now they're like, well, you can do it even less, and we'll pay you the same fucking amount of money. And he's like, okay. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, bam, that's a good idea, Tony. <laughs> he's like, yeah, shots of fries. Like, you know, I don't, I just don't get it. Like, it's because yeah. they're, it, they're smartly phasing him out because they can't just fully yank him off TV. Oh, no, they could. I, I Vince did it for years. They could. No, I know, but I'm saying Tony. Tony can't. Tony's like share too much to do that to him. He, he wants me seen as the nicey nice guy. With but, I'm saying I even pay per views. Like it's it's so hard. Like honestly, Jer. J, yeah, Jer. Jer. My stuff is really. You do a different. I can, no see. I can't do that. What is what is it? J J A double R E double T. Yeah. Very good. Okay. You forgot the J E Oh, J E double F. Yep. See, I was never good at doing that because the way my brain works, I was scattergory. I'm like, scattergory is that in my brain, I would always be like, J A double T. Nope, that's wrong. That's Jet. Like, <laughs> and then you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Hey, you laugh, Tim, but I'm the same way when Carmela used to have fabulous and she used to spell oh, it. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, 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 was the same. I thought she missed I'm a like, letter. F A L U Q R S. It sounded like she missed a letter. Yeah. <laughs> I know. F A. Or even no, even the song that was like F A B O L O U S. Is that how you really spell it? I spell yeah, it, I right? did the same. That I, I'll agree with you guys. I did the same thing with that one. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just like, oh, that's just, we're definitely getting older there, folks. But and I honestly it, didn't know up until a couple of years ago there was a W in soft. We've been missing the whole time. It's not S O F T. It's S W A F T. You didn't no, know that it was S A W F T. Yeah, that. Yeah, I knew, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Okay, I, was, I got really worried for me. For, for for me, like I thought it was always S. Um, they taught me in school it was S O F T. Oh, I got you. I didn't. Know I thought you're being. I thought you're being you know, for cereal. Oh yeah, yes. It's I was very like... very cereal. The cereal is happening <laughs> over here. Hey, sometimes Thanks, you know what? tonight. No, I have uh, nachos. It would be cheese. really good with some creamy world order on it. Ah. Yeah. Some classic colors. Hey, you know, to be fair, sometimes you just have to let the dog lie. You just have to just just let it go. Just let it fly. Let it just sever ties and just go off into the sunset. Yes. Realizing you made a big fucking mistake and just be like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like Vince McMahon's doing. I know. Well, I, yeah. Just, so I just, I'm just, I am shocked. Sorry, go ahead, Tim. I'm just. Well, I, first thing I texted you guys, I'm like, "This is fucking real." I'm like, really? <laughs> the hell? Yeah. So for those of you I haven't heard, and if you're a wrestling fan, I don't know how you haven't heard this yet, but uh, this man has retired from all things WWE. Uh, we already knew he stepped down from being CEO, but he's no longer in charge of creative. He's basically Thank God. Nothing, nothing to do with the company. Uh, a couple things. Triple H is uh, talent relations now. Uh, uh, Stephanie and Nick Khan are co-CEOs. Uh, John Laurinaitis is out. Uh, so it's kind of the shakeup of the hierarchy of WWE. Um, yeah, it's kind of, for me personally, just uh, let's go into my initial reaction when I heard the news. It's I have mixed emotions because, you know, the stuff that's come out recently with him, you know, obviously is nothing good. And it just goes to question, you know, his character and morals and everything. 
But at the same time, he did create something that we all enjoy. Uh, I know we, we shit on it a lot nowadays, but if you look back to our childhood in the 90s and stuff like that, and even the early 2000s, it was really entertaining. Um, and there was a lot of good stuff, uh, you know, to like about it. And, you know, even in this era, every once in a while, there is a good product, good match, good storyline. Uh, it's kind of few and far between now. But again, he created this company and without him, we wouldn't be doing this podcast probably. Um, so it's, it's mixed emotions. I think from, uh, I think you have to separate the personal from the professional, kind of like every time we talk about a Benoit match, uh, it's kind of the same thing. So I think, you know, professional wise, I mean, I want to thank him for his contributions. I know he's done a lot of shady shit too, but I mean, he does, he didn't deliver a product, uh, that we all enjoy, uh, personally, yeah, he's a scumbag. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a, it's a mixed emotions, but, um, I never thought this day would actually come. I thought he was going to be there till he died. Um, I never thought he was going to retire, but it always seems like these prominent, well-known figures, whether it be sports, politics, whatever, they always get taken down by some sort of scandal. Uh, and unfortunately, that's the way it went for Vince. Without Vince McMahon, there'd be no WCW. Without Vince McMahon, there'd be no AEW. Without Vince McMahon, there'd be no TNA. Um, he revolutionized the business, uh, like Tim said, and to that, we do owe him a debt of gratitude because we probably wouldn't have a podcast to talk about this stuff if it wasn't for Vince McMahon. That being said, he might be the sleaziest sleazeball in the last 20 years. Who knows? Might More stuff might come out that he's covered up and, and stuff like that. But um, definitely, like Tim said, again, you have to separate the, the person, Vince McMahon, from the pioneer of WWF to WWE, that, that visionary, because without him who knows where wrestling would be right now. And I think that we owe him a big thank you on that side. And then we also owe him another big thank you for finally going the fuck away. So I think that he held on way too long to begin with. And then this scandal just helped push him out. I, I know it probably wasn't exactly his doing. He probably wasn't like, you know what? I'm going to leave. They were like, Vince, you probably should fucking leave. And he was like, all right, I guess. But like, you know, it, you have to look at it from a business standpoint of a publicly traded company, it's not a good look for all this news to come out. And then that dumb motherfucker to show up on raw and SmackDown the very next week and be like, <laughs> here I am. And, and now <laughs> whatever, whatever. it's like, Together. and then the, then he sends Titus O'Neil out his fucking corporate puppet out there on raw last week, make a in. very odd promo <laughs> out of nowhere about like how, like we'll get through it together. We're all good points though. Like, you know, WWE has pioneered this and done all like, yeah, I'm, I agree. That doesn't mean that Vince wasn't a fucking slime ball. <laughs> so. I love how they said they don't bring up politics. Like, do you not remember in the 90s you had Sergeant Slaughter as an Iraqi sympathizer during the freaking war? Or and anytime someone's from another country, they're always like an evil version. Like, yeah, like Gunther. <laughs> or... yeah, it's, it's clearly. Yeah, political. Well, yeah. Do they not remember the WWE Rock the Vote? Like when WWE they used to have, like, literally encourage and show Vince McMahon at the Democratic and Republican National Conventions? You bullshit. You don't get into politics. Re- they don't bring up religion. You wrestled God, Vince. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, seriously. And I just think it's funny. Of all people, the one you suspended because he tried to make your ass a gentleman by holding you back. Remember the tennis Neil holding back Vince? He, and then yeah. he got suspended because like he put his hands on him, but he was trying to let the ladies go first. That's all I remember is he got suspended for that. Like, and you're gonna have that motherfucker go on TV and talk about you respect women? <laughs> like you suspended was, him for respecting women. He was just pissed that he held him back and he couldn't get the women first. <laughs> right. No, I mean I, I definitely echo both of your sentiments where it's like, you know, you can't just unfortunately take away everything he's done because like you both said perfectly, we wouldn't be on this podcast complaining, talking, learning, laughing about wrestling. If he didn't create, you know, the phenomenon that was WBF is WWE. Yeah. Like you said, Tim, very shady ways of getting there, whether it's how he treats people in the territories that his dad promised he wouldn't, or, you know, keeping matches going when someone dies in the ring or, Maybe some partners with like Girls Gone Wild. They're very sleazy. Another watch that documentary if you if you haven't yet. By the way, that that was on TNT. But the Girls Gone Wild guy, Joe, whatever his name is. But yeah, Joe seeing Francis. how Joe Francis, seeing how um, Vince partnered with him, realizing this guy was just a sleaze bag too. So it's like, ooh, 
you hit the nail on the head, Tim. Like they always kind of get brought down by these scandals. And so for that, I'm glad he's gone because you know the image of the company, like wrestling, already has kind of a poor image in the regular public anyway. And like you both said too, he overstayed his welcome. Like maybe he should have bowed out in like 2004 because honestly, from like 2006 to the 2020 ish, he just they, when they went, I don't know, two PG or what. There was some spur of the moments there, but it just it just trailed off, you know, with certain people getting pushes. And I hope that creative will maybe have a breath of fresh air, realizing that he's not going to come rip up their script like we always joke. Or maybe that, you know, with Triple H there and Stephanie, like, hey guys, like this this is what the vision for the product is, but how could we get there? Maybe be more open to ideas. Maybe Forbidden Door Two next year will be more lit. Maybe it'll be WB versus AEW. Like, who knows the potential? So. I think there's excitement as a wrestling fan too, that there could be good change in the product. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the one thing that, you know, um, I have full confidence in Triple H from Stephanie, the Nick Khan thing will worries me a little bit because what is his background that he doesn't have, like, I feel like he's going to be a Vince McMahon puppet kind of. And I, I just, I have an uneasy feeling about his direction and the co-CEO thing. I just, so that's weird. That is very. How, weird. how did how did it work out on Raw with the co GMs? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing because here's the thing: when you have two bosses, the talent and the staff, they're not going to know who to go to for if they have a question. And I, I think it brings the risk of having two different opinions. Stephanie might have one opinion on how to run things, and Nick Khan might have another one. And I think it can get convoluted. It's ba- like when WCW was at its end, you had Bischoff and Russo tr- working together, both in charge, and stuff like that. Um, so that worries me. I mean, if Dick Khan was gone, I would I would feel a lot more confident um, about the direction. I am excited about the TV uh, TV 14 uh, rating change. I think that's when it was TV 14 in the past. I think um, that's when they put out their best product. And you could do TV 14 without necessarily having to go towards the Attitude Era again. Um, you know, I think my theory on that was when they went to PG, I, I think it was because of the Benoit scandal, because that was right around the time they went to PG. It was right after Benoit, you know, did his, uh, you know, murder and everything. So, I think after that, that's when they changed everything. And I think... Allegedly. Yeah. So that's just my opinion. I don't have any facts on that, but it's, the timeline kind of matches up with that. So, um, and yeah, They're, the product... I, I think the product... I'm sorry, go ahead, Mongo. Oh, I was going to just kind of add to your point. I bet you because maybe they're worried about the whole advertisers they would lose with that situation. Well, they that, took a beating in the media after that. Like uh, Nancy Grace oh, yeah. was like all over everybody in the media. And was how like, violent the product is. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of toned down that way you can still attract the advertisers so you didn't lose too. So, yeah. And I think you said it perfectly. You can do TV 14. I mean, look at, you know, AEW. They're a little bit edgier. You know, they kind of tote that line, but they don't fully cross it. Even if they can kind of keep up with NXT, Black and Golds was kind of, you know, TV 14. It didn't feel PG. You can do it. You don't, and you don't have to be that whole force like, <laughs> I said shit. Like, I love AEW to death, but man, they, I feel like they just get off of like, shit. Who gets to say it this week? I say it, shit. <laughs> like, just get off the whole, like, we have to swear. Like, they started ramping up, even on the promos on SmackDown tonight. He's like, you're a little bitch. You got no balls. Like you can tell, they're starting to tease it in. It's just hopefully Drew McIntyre's sword doesn't bend when he has speak, to. Up the time. Speak, speaking of that, before we go too much further, can we all just agree that we are blessed to be having someone like Pat McAfee involved in the WWE? Because I will tell you what, that dude is one of the hardest working motherfuckers in this business, in this industry, in the in the business of of sports in general. Dude's got his own podcast. He's commentating SmackDown. He's wrestling part time. This motherfucker. We are just. Uh, he. I don't think. Like I saw. And he was a punter. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I saw the t- a TikTok from uh, the Straight Shoot podcast that he would. He was like almost insulted that Excalibur got Commentator of the Year and nobody gave McAfee any any credit in in that aspect. And it's like, no offense to Excalibur. He's great. Don't get me wrong. He keeps JR from falling asleep. He keeps Shivani in line. Like, he does a great job. But, like, we have to realize how lucky we are to have someone like Pat McAfee who can talk on the mic, who can commentate, who can wrestle when he needs to. I mean, this guy has transcended 
the business in like a year's time. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you think he has become Shane McMahon, except he's like 10 times better at what he does than Shane McMahon was. And that's no I, insult to Shane. That's just how good Pat McAfee is. I've always been a Pat McAfee, Mark. I mean, yeah, even when he played for the Colts and he would play against the Patriots, he'd be like, to see their punter that hyped up all the time and just to see the character he was, like when they do interviews, I'm like, that man is a smart marketing person. He knows he's a punter. He knows he's a diamond dozen position in the NFL. So he's going to make himself stand out. He's going to make himself a personality because that way the fans of India are going to beg to keep him. So that way if the Colts are like, ah, we can find a cheap punter, but they love me. So then he rises to fame, obviously. And then when we shared the post about him getting re-signed, I'm pretty sure we were talking in the thread. And one of the things I said is, like, like exactly what you said, Roland, is Pat McAfee should have gotten announced of the year. I love Excalibur too, but that dude went from me doubting him, like, why is this clown, you know, why is he going to be a commentator? Like, I'm not saying clown in a bad way, but, like, he to me, I didn't think he'd be too, he could take it seriously because if you listen to his podcast, he's – He's a lot more out there. It's a great show, by the way. Um, and then, yeah, he's just, he's elevated. Now that he's working angles, like NXT, him, Adam Cole, that was so fun when they had their whole little, their angle. That was probably one of the best angles NXT had before they started going down. Him, he's making Corbin actually look like a legit bad guy. Now he's, he's helping build up boring Corbin. So uh, I agree. That's, that's bum ass Corbin. Bum ass Corbin. Yeah, he led the champ. Uh, yeah, no. So I just wanted to kind of piggyback off that, Roland, because that's it's a. I agree, hundred percent. He's my favorite announcer in the in the business right now. Is is Pat McAfee? And and don't get me wrong, Corey Graves is good at what he does too. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not insulting him. I'm not insulting Excalibur, any of those guys. Like to be fair, we are blessed right now with some really good commentators. I will say that Jr. is still kicking around, screwing things up here and there. But like to be honest, even Jimmy Smith has come a long way in a year's time. So like we're we're actually blessed to have really good commentary right now in in a sport where sometimes we had Mike Adamley. Like no <laughs> offense to Mike Adamley, no he had brain injuries, whatever, but like you see some of the bad Jeff like, RV. Yeah. Well, I mean, like even even coach, like coach wasn't that good, but like he was he he like carved out a niche for himself. And I think I respect him more for like the character that he became and like what he was able to do. And then the fact that he even came back, like it's just Right now, we're honestly blessed. And to be fair, think about how long Michael Cole's been doing this. And like, everybody's like, JR is the GOAT. He's been doing this forever. It's like, Michael Cole's been doing this for fucking ever, too. Like, and I honestly, know he started later than JR, not to cut you off, Mongo, but like, still, we got Cole's been doing it for like 20 fucking years at this point. Like, he's been doing it for a long time. So, that's another thing I'm excited, too. With Vince not screaming in their ear as much, they can be a yep. little bit more free. Because Michael Cole put out a tweet a little while ago saying that Pat McAfee re- revitalized his career and revitalized his passion. And you definitely could tell, and he'll be the first minute. Just go back and watch like WB 2016 to 2021. It's the big dog. He was just hitting catchphrases. He wasn't really commenting. He just had to hit his catch. It's boss time. Like it, it was just him hitting his catchphrase. And it's like, he's, it's sad to see him mail it in. Vintage and- Randy Orton. <laughs> And it's great to see, like, when Pat McAfee, he's jumping, he's like, get down, you idiot. Like, he has to be his kind of his heel shtick again. And I think it's – you're right. And I also want to throw in Josh Matthews over at Impact right now. He he busts his ass, too. And he doesn't really get the credit he deserves for him almost winning tough enough to becoming a backstage you know, reporter, not knowing what he's doing, to probably being a sneaky, decent commentator in the business that doesn't get talked about. So – not to get on a commentator right there, but yeah, you're right. I think right now in professional wrestling, we have some great commentators. Kevin Kelly. Yeah, New I mean, Japan, think, great one. Think, think about that. I mean, that guy's been around forever. Like, he's been around for a long time. And it was weird, too. I was like, if it's like Sunday Night Heat watching that pay per view with him commentating. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, the only thing I wish that either NXT or even AEW, I, I wish somebody could find something for Joey Styles to do. I miss that over the top Joey Styles, like, you know, even Joey Styles would fit so good in NXT right now. Like, you know, the, the like you said, NXT is a little edgier. So, like, he would, you know, he would fit so good in that. But, like, Joey Styles, his credit when he was with the ECW, a lot of the shit he did by himself. Yeah. So, like, he, I mean, like I said, we, we've been blessed to have a lot of really good commentators. And, like I said, right now in the business, each show at least has one like standout guy, at least one, sometimes more than one. I mean, to be fair, I love the uh, 
the when they show like the the acclaimed raps on like dark and stuff when you have taz and the big show like they're like yo listen and they like you know like I, just something like that's funny as hell because like it just you're not used to somebody like doing a promo and the commentators like interacting with it on tv like it's hilarious when like you hear like you know max castor he's like yo and then taz is like yo and then like he's like listen and paul white's like listen <laughs> like it's, it's just hilarious like it just it like i said the the batch of commentators we have we need to be very thankful because it could be like mike adamley's it could be you know i mean there's different guys they've tried over the what years. a maneuver it could be like <laughs> alex marvez I mean, no offense. Oh. He's a decent backstage guy. Oh, but he's not he's a call. He's not a play-by-play or a color comment. He's a good backstage guy. He is like a, an interviewer. He's perfect at that. But that's it. Yeah, think, he was awful. At the, think of some I of the we did that one show. <laughs> think of some of the pay-per-views early on that had Marvez, yeah. like Marvez, on it, and it's like, <laughs> you stinky. Like it's, it's like that's not very good. You know what I mean? It's like, Ugh. but anyways. Yeah. And I just think too, it kind of all goes in line with like I'm excited to see, and I hope get rid of that overly controlling attitude. That's that's the big thing that wrestling fans should be excited that Vince trying. Like again, yeah, we could do a whole episode and say here's how he did this and this, but we know the history. We've talked about it throughout this show, but his psycho control over every little nuance. I think that's what's gonna was holding stuff back. So. Like we're you know how we got on like the commentator tangent of them getting more free. I'm also kind of excited to see what what AEW and WWE do to each other now because now you got Triple H on the side who he will be like Young Vince Man who's like I want to prove myself. I'm going to take on Tony Khan. I'm going to put them out of business. They're pissed because he's going to have that attitude as he should. And he's did got guys, Cody. Sorry. No, I didn't say kind of off subject. But did you see the tweet that Tony Khan put out today? Where that was like savage. the longest, longest reigning CEO in wrestling or something. In US wrestling. Yeah. yeah. I know people are so bad out of shape about that, but I thought it was funny because you know damn funny. you know damn well if it roles were reversed, Vince would be like, huh. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> the best part is, is Vince probably saw it and went, <laughs> like Vince probably, you know, saw the tweet and, and chuckled like that. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> good one like kind of you know what i mean like he he probably respects the deep down vince probably respects the side hustle of tony khan like the way that he's kind of built his company kind of like coming out of nowhere and, and and doing everything he did and everything he has to respect tony khan for everything he's done whether he wants to admit it or not i bet you like i said if he's if he saw that tweet he probably got a good chuckle out of it like <laughs> that's good shit you know what i mean like vince that's one thing i will say about vince is he's a very very honest person when it comes to competition whether you know he might he might like shoot the competition down in interviews and stuff but he's not stupid like, he knows AEW's competition why else would he sign Cody Rhodes back like right. he knows so it, why else do you go after MJF and FTR right. yeah the other thing too is like I think when it comes to Vince like we've said that he's kind of overstayed his welcome and everything and he's had a lot of shitty ideas recently in the last few years but Having said that, I truly believe that he thinks they're good ideas. Like, I think he's, I think he's really convinced what he's doing. So, I don't think he's like purposely putting out a bad product or something. I think he believes what he's doing is right, even though it could be stupid. Um, so, I, you know, I think he definitely has a passion. I think he does want to put out the, the best product for people. I just don't think he, knows how to relate to the people now it's not people have changed over time he's I, don't out think he's, I don't think he's adapted to today's audience yeah he's out of touch exactly. yeah exactly right yeah and, and i think it depends on the kind of personality you are in wrestling so you know i i heard a good interview a while back i think it was with brian cage where he said wrestling is a buffet you know there's always something for everyone he's like but you have to look at the in-ring product like a buffet too you might have someone who He's a little bit more spotty because he likes to do some of those spots, but he can tell a story with those spots. You might have someone who just wants to go in there and beat the living shit out of you and like potato the shit out of you and make the match look brutal. You have the David Glad, like he was just explaining all the different archetypes. He's like, people just forget and they just see one style and they think that's all the wrestlers can do. And I think not recognizing that's the future of wrestling is that people are going to mix the old school a la FTR basically wrestling like 80s style wrestling versus new school young bucks who are still kind of doing the indie style 
toned down in the ring a little bit, but they're still, you know, indie spot fest. So you can have a good mix. And I think Vince just couldn't comprehend it. It had to be one way, it had to be the WWE way. So I hope he, I hope this allows also the in ring product to kind of still evolve because that's what's going to get everybody. Because some people are just so stuck, like, like you said, Tim, he thinks it's good because he's so stuck in that 90s, like that golden next gen era that everyone loves, like the Doink the Clown and, you know, the over the top gimmicks, you know. You know, chin locks for five minutes, transitions, tell the story in the ring. And there's nothing wrong with that style of wrestling. It's just he doesn't he didn't want the flippy dippy stuff, whereas Jim Cornette says the outlaw mud show. <laughs> yeah, so I mean it's it's interesting because there's a lot of unknowns right now what's gonna happen. I mean, we like I said earlier, we don't know if Stephanie and Nick Khan, how they're gonna work together, um, where Triple H comes into this. Um, I just, it's, but it's also an exciting time because it, this, we've never known WWE without the man. This is a, the first time this has ever happened. This is a new, a, a really at the beginning of a new era in wrestling. So, I mean, it, there's a lot of excitement too. Um, I do think the, uh, NXT guys and girls are going to benefit from this with Triple H in as talent relations. I think, uh, they're going to put on a, a, a really good product. And I think, I'm hoping at least my gut feeling is that they'll be a little bit better used once they get called up to the main roster. Oh, yeah. um, I, 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 I think that's going to happen. So I, I do, um, you know, feel like that would be a good thing. And, you know, because like you look at uh, Champa right now, like just being Mrs. Lackey, like he deserves so much better than what he's been doing lately. Did you, so. he's, did you hear why Vince Alex liked Riley him? 3.0. Yeah. Did, did you hear yeah. why Vince liked him? No, uh, <laughs> because he liked his broad shoulders. Oh, that, <laughs> that yeah, was, was like, that the one where you said like look at those or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like and then you're like, as Roland t- mentioned last week, then you had the segment last week on SmackDown. Don't forget to mention his thighs. Like Vince is clearly like, check out those deltoids. They're so great. And then you got Johnny Ace going, Huh, oh, they're not as good as yours though, boss. <laughs> It's just like I didn't mean to cut you off too, but I just thought that like all when you said he was like Mrs. Lackey, I'm like I think it was Vince was like he's a good manager. Look at those delts. Oh, he's he can punch Logan Paul so hard. Like I don't know. <laughs> it's a late night show, folks. Don't judge us. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's uh, you know I'm excited though. I uh, like I said, I think. Um, you know, going forward, I, I, I'm excited to see what the product brings. Uh, I kind of, you know, switching subjects. Um, <laughs> I think the dirt sheets are kind of um, hitting a wall lately because there's a whole report that Brock Lesnar uh, <laughs> walked out of SmackDown uh, yesterday, uh, which was in our neck of the woods, by the way, in Boston uh, oh. after the Vince McMahon thing. And then, surprise, he shows up at the end of SmackDown. So, I just and then he had the whole thing with MJF catching a plane leaving double or nothing. It's just like stop, <laughs> like just get facts before you like tweet shit. Well, and and that's the other thing too. Like you were saying, everybody's so quick to get like their news out there and be the yeah. It, it, it happens in sports all the time. You hear well, like any you know, any this news. Person's, like, this person's getting traded here, and then like yeah. this is the so like the the dirt sheet writers are all trying to be the first one to break this news. Yeah, and I hate to break it to them. Whether it's Sean Ross Sapp, whether it's Brian Alvarez, whether it's uh, friggin' Dave Meltzer, like you guys are never a hundred percent right. Like I don't care what anybody says, but like, and I'm not trying to throw anybody. I'm just saying, like these reports, like if you hear something from WrestleZone or wherever you hear something, like it doesn't matter. A lot of these times they come out so quick that it's never a hundred percent right. There might be details that are right, but it's almost that first report is almost never a hundred percent factual. And that's why Meltzer, if you notice, always walks around it and backtracks. <laughs> and he always gives himself an out every time he says something like, all right, so Tim might go bowling tomorrow, but Tim might also not go bowling tomorrow. It depends. If it's sunny out, then Tim is more likely to go bowling. But I've heard that if it's cloudy, he will not go bowling, but he could still go bowling. Plans may change. It's like, so is Tim. Like that, That's okay, Dave. So what's the answer? I told you. Yeah. <laughs> seven. The answer is yeah. seven. If you, if you, you know, sit back and think about it. Okay, none of these dirt sheet writers are in the building. So if Brock Lesnar say he did walk out, 
That means somebody has to tell these dirt pew riders that happened. I don't think any guy in the back sees Brock Lesnar walk. The first thing they do is texting Meltzer. Like, I don't think that's going to be their first reaction. Like, I don't, unless there's a stooge or something that likes to report shit. But, like, I don't – if you know, you're an employee or a wrestler and you see Brock Lesnar storm off because he's pissed, like, you're not going to text Dave Meltzer right then and there. Like, it just – and they know. were taking jabs at him all night, and then they get super yeah. defensive, and then I get sassy Sean Ron Sap because that Ross, geez, said his name wrong. Don't Sean Ross Sap. I'm a, I said Ron, so now I'm going to get a freaking heat tweet for that too, probably. You liar. But, but no, I had question because he basically, I thought he had said a tweet about, yeah, I heard that too about Brock leaving angry, and then he goes, you mean this one? So he, you know, limp, you know lambast the shit on me on Twitter and I was like yeah my bad and then he's like or you're lying I'm like yep sorry he's like cool I'm like all right like appreciate it. like we've all got worked before man like I admitted I put I was the first thing I put on our social media after Smackdown I was like well we got worked like but I like when we get worked because that means they did something right and they're like well why would they work the dirt sheets and like Tim was saying they've been getting wrong and they sit there Alvarez has been all over Twitter, like firing back people. Like I was right. I said this. It's like you said that he wasn't on the script. How do you know? Like how do you know someone sending you the real script? Like you don't know what you're seeing. You're getting some guy in the building like Brock Lesnar left was pissed. The <laughs> guy's I'm fucking with this guy. Let's see. Like, I'm gonna totally make up a lie that he left because events, and then we fell for it. Or that oh why would they work? Why would they do that? Because they're wrestling. Because they're wrestling. Rollins eating. <laughs> Was that a Twizzler? No, it's uh, it's probably Red Vine. It's uh, Sweet Tarts ropes. Ah, I, get, I got you hooked on those. Sponsor us too. Yeah, uh, I got they look delicious. Those. They are good. Yeah. Uh, what well, is that? Green apple. It's uh, it's uh, cherry punch. Cherry punch. Okay. Have you I'm tried the know. watermelon ones? Uh, no, I think I've only had the green apple ones. They just came out. You guys are killing me. The watermelon ones are delicious. I tried them yeah. a couple weekends ago. They are very good. You can only find them at Walmart, though. Yeah. I I found them. Walmart, sponsor us. Sam Walton. We're nice people. Anyhow. Yeah, we are. Um, we have no, many I, Walmarts by us. Yeah, very, very many. Very many Walmarts. Super Any, Walmarts. Anyone can say that, though. We have yeah, many true. Walmarts by us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I just think that we're in an age now where everybody's so quick to, like, I need to be at social media. I need to be the first to put this out there even if it's not right. And then, like you said, you have the people that get butthurt when you call them on it. And then they're like, well, I wasn't 100% wrong. I got this part right. And I got it's like, dude, if you don't fucking know, don't put it out there. That solves every... And that goes for Sean Ross Sapp. That goes for Alvarez. That goes for fucking uh, Buster Olney for ESPN. Like that. Go, if you don't fucking know, Schefter. just don't put it out there. Yeah, yeah Adam Schefter. Like, it, it goes for anybody. Like that. That's the problem right now with social media is everybody's trying to be the first to break something and like, they'll get like part of it. Right. And yeah. the part they get right is like, and then they'll be like, see, I got that right. And it's like, yeah, but the other three parts you said were fucking total bullshit. And like I said, it's like a fucking meteorologist. They get paid six figures to be wrong half the time. And then you get ringside news that like all they're doing is they're, they're reporting rumors. Like they're literally just compiling rumors half the time. And you have, some sites that I used to think were pretty well respected start sharing their articles. It's and then he's been roasted because he came out to be transphobic. There's a, there's a whole thing with him and Nyla where the Steve Carrier, which fuck you, you're a creep. I've, they asked someone put your bug shut out there, so you uh you have quite some interesting uh, details. You should tell Steve. But uh, Ringside News, they literally posted something about Nyla, very inappropriate comment, and then just kept tweeting and tweeting, digging themselves a hole. People are calling him out on it, and then they ringside just went on a blocking vest. They blocked us too, and all I did was I shared a funny meme where it was ringside news, and then it showed Fuego sliding into the DMs with a, a screenshot of them saying Fuego was contract not real, and he's like, "Dude, I DM'd you guys." Like he basically told them, "Yes, it is," and they're still like, "You're wrong." Like they told Fuego he was wrong about his own story. I'm like, how can you take a company like that seriously? Like, no, we were right, dude. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. I, it's my contract. Yo, you're making it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 
crazy times in wrestling right now. I mean, this whole the Vince scandal is resonation. Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, what do you think the outlook is, Roland? What, uh, what do you think is going to happen in the future? If you had to predict the future, I think you're a hundred percent right, Tim, when you talk about the di- the dynamic between uh, Nick Khan and Stephanie. Like, we'll see how that goes. But I hope it does get a little more edgy. I hope the product gets back to more like what uh, NXT was trying to carve out when Triple H was in charge before Mm -hmm. Vince took it over and made it NXT 2.0 and and stuff like that. I think that there's no reason why any wrestling show can't be TV 14 and still be able to be watched by everyone. And I know it says TV 14, but like to be fair, what other show – can you take your kids to that you're not going to hear swear? Like, if you go to a baseball game, you're going to have fans chanting, you know, if you're going to the Yankees Red Sox game, you're going to hear like, fuck you, Boston, or like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, you're going to hear all these words that you would like. So it's out there no matter what you do. So I think it's the smartest move they can do is try to go TV 14, get a little edgier, get a little more. And, and it worked out for them in the, you know, the, in the 90s when you had the Monday Night Wars. If they didn't get edgier, they wouldn't be here anymore. It's like Kisher is repeating itself. Yeah, it's like when you know WF was, you know, floundering, and I know people are going to criticize me because people love that next gen, new gen. I keep forgetting. I think it's called the new gen era, from like ninety two to like ninety six ish. People love that era, but I'm like, yeah, but Diesel wasn't big because WF. Kevin Nash became big, and WF became larger than life. Kevin Nash is what you remember. One two three kid. No, you remember. You remember that moment on Raw, but that's not. That wasn't like he had his best run of his career. So people are nostalgic for it, but it was too gimmick heavy. They focused way too much on the storylines. Things weren't really believable. Like I'm sorry, but I don't believe the Reaper Man's really going to steal my car. They go wrestle a match afterwards. Like just hey 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 hey. You never know what he does on his own time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like I get the same disbelief, but. It, you can't do that nowadays in the age of the internet. It, it might be a little easier to pull off a feud, you know, in the pre-internet. We can be like, yeah, you know, these two dudes hate each other. Social media, you, there's pictures of them, like, on the internet five minutes later, like, hanging out. Like, I don't know if you remember, there was a Braun Strowman was feuding with Roman. They were in Rome, and someone took a picture of them eating together, and then Vince, like, lost his shit. And it's like, but I kind of don't blame Vince there, because you're supposed to be in this, like, blood feud, not out eating pasta. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's the stuff they need to kind of enforce a little bit. Like wrestlers should be careful. Like if they're having it, if they have a gimmick Twitter account, like I like how Matt Hardy kind of blends the lines. But like Alexa, like if if you're gonna have a personal Twitter account, that's fine. But you're if you're gonna have a gimmick Twitter account, it's not gimmick just Mondays from nine to twelve. It kind of breaks the character when you're like supposed to be this spooky girl, but they're like, me and Ryan Cabrera went to the winery to get some wine this week. You're like. <laughs> Well, and then that that goes to what Ric Flair was saying about TNA um, when he was in TNA. You know, he thought it was comical that like the first night there, like Hogan and him are supposed to have this feud, and then before the show, they're signing autographs at the same fucking table. Yeah. And then after the show, they're signing autographs at the same fucking table. <laughs> He's like, so like, I already knew this wasn't going to work because they weren't taking it seriously. Like, we get that it's fake, like it's or. So, sorry, sorry, folks. If you don't realize it is <laughs> yeah. another word. Another word for predetermined is fake. It is fake at most points. Yes, they do really get hurt, and yes, things happen where people like get injured. Whatever, that's real. I get it. The outcomes are fake. They are predetermined. They are written written in on paper before they start a match. But you also have to blend that line, like like Mongo was saying. You can't have Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns going going on a dinner date at Olive Garden. And then fucking, you can't have Ric Flair and, and Hogan supposedly hating each other, but they're out hanging out at Hogan's beach shop drinking beers. Like, you just, you can't, like, it doesn't, you can't do that. So, like, I hope that Triple H and Stephanie and them kind of take it back a little bit, like, and tell these tell these guys, like, listen, be careful what you post. Try to, try to keep it as kayfabe as you can. Obviously, be real. We're not expecting you to lie. But, like, if you're in a feud with somebody, maybe just don't post the pictures with them. Go celebrate wherever you want. Go go to yeah. the Bahamas with them. Maybe just don't post those pictures or post a picture like separately. Like, hey, I'm over here. I'm over here. Like, and that right there would make things so much better because, like Mongo said, it's kind of hard to believe that Alexa Bliss is supposed to be this like demon spooky character, and she's like, oh, we went and had wine together with my husband. Like, it's like okay, <laughs> cool. Like, what? Like, you know, 
but like, and that's not the shit on Alexa Bliss. It's, it's actually no, just a no. ex- recent example. <laughs> well, no, and then that, that's it's a good point though. Like, and then you also have you know lately you have the whole thing with with Wyatt and Edge and everything and, and Judgment Day and all that shit. What a clusterfuck that was too. Oh, like, whoever, they whoever, have ruined it. Like, yeah. it could have been so oh, yeah. good. Here's what I want to know, right? Like, okay, you decide. Okay, Cody's hurt. We need a we need a face. We're gonna go to Edge. Like, okay, we're gonna pivot to Edge. Why? If this is supposed to be like kind of more of like a and some of the reason reportedly that Edge wanted out of the Judgment Days because the direction they were taking it was more like a spooky kind of character and Edge didn't want to quite go there, so that was some of the reason too supposedly. Why, on God's green earth, is Finn Balor not the demon Finn Balor <clears throat> in this group? Well, you like, have to why, put pants on now. Well, I'm just saying though, but like why, like it's cool to have Finn Balor take this group over. Or like be part of it or whatever they're doing now. I know Rhea getting hurt kind of you know derailed that a little bit, but like why you're trying to make like Damian Priest like you know when he was kind of like that um he was almost you know like a good guy but a bad guy, he had kind of like that personality conflict. Yeah, like falls with him bad. Well, and, well that's the worst part. Like let him be that that demon type character, and then you have somebody like Finn Balor who has history of being this darker character, and they're like, I ah, just go out there with fucking pants on, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, what are you guys doing? Like, I just, well, I and, not, and they took away the mystique. They took away Edge. They took away the mystique, mm-hmm. and they just try to have Damian Priest do the same promo every week. And it's like, it's not working with him. And then, if you were going to turn Edge face, you should have built up the turn for a little while, like him, you know, teaching Finn the ropes, and then Finn backstabbing him. And that would have made more sense for him to go. Fine, I need to go back to my roots. Clearly. I, I trusted these this generation. You guys don't respect you know my generation. You don't respect my leadership. Could have gone the whole thing. So it's crazy how it went from being this will be like the next House of Black to it basically became like that faction Brandy had. <laughs> <laughs> the Nightmare Collective, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Speaking of that, can't wait till Brandy shows up on WWE TV. Said no one ever. I don't mind looking at her. Yeah, but nobody <laughs> wants to see her on TV. <laughs> like, look at her on OnlyFans or like on websites or whatever. But like, that I think that's the biggest thing too right now with social media and everything else. Tony Khan has been like from the get go the first person to let these people be people. Vince's thing is like, well, you can't have Twitch and you can't do all this other stuff and you can't try to make money for yourself because I own that i that EP. That or the IP or the intellectual property, I own that. You can't, you can't, you cannot be, you cannot be Xavier Woods on YouTube. You cannot be Paige on Twitch. Like fuck you, Vince. Like let let these people make fucking money. Like what? Why? Why do you need to, like, be that selfish? Like, and I'm hoping that by him leaving, it it lets these people be. Like it, nothing entertains me more than seeing the real person do things they like to do. Like, like the what? Xavier Woods and Page video. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there, but I'm well, just you mentioned saying, them. <laughs> saying, like you have, you have, you know, Xavier Woods can't even really go by Xavier Woods on up, up, down, down. Yeah, yeah. You, have, you know, like Vince is like, well, you can do your own YouTube show, but don't use your WWE name. You can't do That's that. Use his TNA name instead. Yeah, Consequences Creed. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just, I, I hope that. That's one thing that Tony Khan has been really good at doing. He's letting these people make money whichever way they can, keeping them happy because there are some people on, on AEW programming that don't get on TV as much as they should or as much as they think they should. So what do they do? They get to go on you know, Twitch or go on OnlyFans and Tony, Tony Storm's thing. Like You get to do things that make you supplemental income so that way maybe they're not paying you as much as person A, but you're supplementing your income, kind of like back when Scott Hall wasn't allowed to go to fucking Japan. When you know, when he asked Vince, he was like, you know, can you give me more of my my merchandise or whatever? And Vince was like, no. He's like, well, then can I go to Japan for like eight weeks? Like, can I go make money over there? He's like, no, can't do that. So like, Scott Hall's trying to stay in W in WWE, not go to WCW, and Vince is like, oh fuck you, like you're going, like buy, like it's it. I'm hoping that 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 it, everybody realizes that's all these people are trying to do. They're normal people just trying to make a fucking living. 
And sometimes they don't get paid enough in the ring to be able to make a living. So they try to do things that are, and, and a lot of times it's entertaining and people enjoy watching it. And Vince is like, you can't do that. Nope. You have to, you can't use our name. Like, no, it's like, just fucking live. I hope they let them take bookings again. Like, you know, kind of like, oh, AEW, hey, let's, you know, it, pretty much if they're not like the, you know, the top tier, like Kenny Omega, Moxley, well, Moxley's a bad example, but they take bookings and other promotions. So they Moxley's can a horrible example, by the way. Like, I know you said bad, but it's a horrible example. Um, But yeah, like maybe like, so some of their NXT talent can go out to help supplement or maybe some of your mid carters, like, you know, Ginger on Tinder can go up to, you know, to chaotic wrestling. They still missed the mark on Tim's prediction from like seven months ago that Ginger on Tinder. They still missed that. I mark. know. Maybe well, the whole you, Shanky thing will. That's lead what I was gonna say. You get Shanky dancing and stuff, so maybe it'll lead maybe. that way. I just still think it's funny how he went from his first two lackeys that Randy Orton killed one of them on the announce table. Remember that when he they just like bounced? He went to suplex me and he just bounced him off the table. Even Randy was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh shit." It's like they left, and all of a sudden, two steroided versions of them came out, and you're like, "Oh, it's basically his lackeys again." The same it's like, to it's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when they give them the fucking shit, and they bust out of the they bust out of the crates and shit. And they're like, Wah! "It's like, oh fuck, shaky in here, yeah, yeah shaky in here, holy fuck." <laughs> speaking of speaking of Razor and, and Akum, where are they right now? Oh, that's right, they started their own promotion, and I heard that blows even more than fucking create control your narrative. No, did you hear? What, no, did you hear what happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They but promised a bunch. They promised a bunch of wrestlers, like, "Hey, this is the card we're booking. Here's how much pay we're to fly over here." And then they literally were like, "Yeah, just kidding. We can't afford that." And they canceled the show. And they they told the fans, oh, "It's because talents are you know conflicting schedules." And talents like, "No, no, no. You didn't pay us." <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make it their first show too before they got shut down for being a scam. <laughs> uh. Crazy times. <laughs> that that sounds very creamy. Yeah. Speaking of crazy times, so I hadn't really got a chance to do a deep dive on our stats in a while, so I kind of wanted to look to, you know, say thank you to you guys. So first of all, please make sure you're following us at all of our socials at Triple W P A P Podcast, including the Tickety Talk, Insta Face My Face, Facebook, all those fun platforms. Follow Roland at Roland Feelis. Follow Tim at T K. T Kurt on air. I just messed that up. And me at Triple W P A P Mongol on the Twitter. But so how many countries do you think we're up to now, guys? Because I want to put you on the spot live. 27. My answer is 27. Tim? I'll go 34. Tim, you were slightly you were slightly over. It's 31. I win. Price is right rules, baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not going to go through every country, but I thought it was cool that like we we officially hit. You know, I was like, oh, what if we broke over 30? I'm like, that's pretty no, cool. No, 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 no. You got to name them all. Let's go. All right. So we have the United States. We have India. We have Canada. We have United Kingdom. We have South Africa. We have Russia, Ireland, Spain, New Zealand, Poland, Australia, Germany, Netherlands, Mexico, France, UAE, Italy, Norway, Japan. Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Philippines, Peru, Nepal, Kenya, Argentina, Israel, Hungary, Gibraltar, Dominican Republic, Denmark, Costa Rica, Bulgaria, Bangladesh, Uruguay. 31, baby. 31, baby. <laughs> Three can I just say that I didn't butcher any deep. of those names? Three beers deep, and I can still count to 21. Uh, 31, baby. 30. Yes. <laughs> this guy. But I just want to say, can, can I? Can I at least get a little pat on the back? That was good. For- that was good. not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm not butchering yeah, it. Of, it. of any of us to read the names, you were probably the worst choice. So that was pretty good. That's what I was <laughs> Oh, I, I, I had no problem putting him on the spot. I'm like, I'll just put him on the spot. Name a motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> no, absolutely. But yeah, I think that's cool. You know, we're going to hit 4,000 really soon. So I think goal for end of the year should be let's hit 5,000 guys for downloads. 5,000 countries? Up. No, 5,000 downloads. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Countries, I think we, I think it'd be cool if we can hit that forty mark by the end of the year. That'd be pretty yeah. sweet. <laughs> five thousand countries, he says. <laughs> so, I don't even think there's five thousand countries on the planet. We Hopefully should probably ask Siri. Siri, how many countries are there? You just hold on. Do it up. Come on, where's Matt Striker when you need him? 
that gimmick was terrible. Hey was Siri. Overlay teacher. How many countries in the world are there? One hundred ninety-six countries in the world. Yeah, we're in thirty-one. That's pretty good. That's not bad. No, that's a good ratio. Yeah, that's that's all right. I was yeah, say, right was other. Yeah. Let's get the other one hundred sixty countries on board. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> well, you guys our, Come on, guys, let's go. I, I was going to say, I'm sure the internet limitations over there are worse than mine down here. So uh, that's true. Mm. Not everybody in other countries can blow their internet provider for mediocre internet. <laughs> so that's that's fifteen percent of all the countries in the world. That's, That's pretty impressive for a little fun. <laughs> fucking New Hampshire. And, right. and That's pretty good. So I figured to end on a positive note since we had a lot of like negative and some positive. So I think I keep what's that? Since we talked about Xavier Woods, but it was all the power of positivity. That's good. I like That's that. Right. Well, and right. you got to figure too, like that's an impressive number. Like when you, when you put it that way too, like, that's crazy to think this little podcast that's now had 140 episodes has gone from like, hey, let's have some fun and kind of enjoy ourselves to there's 31 countries out there that have listened to us and probably enjoyed our content at least enough to listen again, hopefully. And, and hopefully. It, it's, it's just crazy to think that like I never once thought in a million years that we were going to have that kind of outreach ever. And, you know, I think that for the last you know, 18, 19, 20 months, roughly somewhere in there since we added Mongo. I think that we're at our best, you know, and it proves that when we have one of us isn't here or whatever, it's just proven that they like hearing us kind of debate. And then we have, we're very similar in our takes, but we're also different enough where it's not like we're just like sniffing each other's assholes. We're not like, oh, yeah, we agree. Like, yep, that's great. Like next, like, you know, we're not, we're not John Lauren. I just going, Oh, boss. Oh, <laughs> I like that. God, your legs look good today. Want me to put some oil on them? You know, like Mama, Mama Bella's got nothing on you. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for sharing that girl with me. I know it was slightly illegal, but thanks, Vince. You're the best boss ever. Now he sounds like a fucking uh, like slow talk. He sounds like Forrest Gump meets Goofy. Like, you mix those two together, you got fucking Johnny Ace. And, and fucking Mama Bella's like, oh, boy, do I get fucking moist for Johnny Ace. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why? What is going on? I, I, you know, I, we have to have fun. We have to, you know, if I don't, if, if my goal in every one of these shows is to pop you guys at least once, and, and I just did. So, I mean, it took an hour, but here we are. You know, I mean, I just, it's, it's a lot it's, of paint. <laughs> <laughs> so what we gotta do is we gotta get Mongo to eat paint on one of these streams, like literally pop a paintball in his mouth just for giggles. That'll have, that'll have to be a goal of something. We'll have to do a goal for that one. <laughs> if we I get the 40 for countries free. by the end of the year, Mongo will chew on a paintball. Right? No? Maybe? I, don't know. I think that'll be a... Uh, we'll see. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> they're they're non toxic, see? Huh. But they're yeah. messy. <laughs> well, I'm not saying they taste good. That's what concerns you about eating the paintball? Is that it's messy? <laughs> well, yes, my PlayStation's right here. <laughs> well, you know, I know where you can get another one for a great deal. Whoop, whoop, almost missed out. <laughs> <laughs> I think on this note, Tim, we got to wrap it up. Yeah, so uh, next week we're going to give you our SummerSlam uh, prediction. Summer are we, though? We were supposed to give them fucking a show from 98 this week. I mean, are we, yeah, though? true. We'll, we'll play. You know, we'll this is not a remix. I don't know. Any WWE news happens on Friday, so you yeah. we never know. Uh, but the plan for now is to do SummerSlam predictions next week as SummerSlam is next Saturday. We'll probably drop the episode uh, a little bit earlier than normal um, since uh, SummerSlam is that Saturday. Probably drop it around noon time or so. Uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning us in. Follow us on our socials. Uh, WWPAP.com is our website. Uh, we will be back next week. Until then, I'm Tim Kurt. I'm Roland Fulis. And I'm Mongo. And this is Wrestling with Wrestling's Past and Present. Bye, Vince. I can't be the only one that does stuff at the end. I hope you're all having a nice day. (laughs) 